Ladies and gentlemen, I return. It is going to be the Forbidden Tech of the Empire. So we have Balthazar Gelt facing off against a Nurgle Sorcerer. And ladies and gentlemen, we're taking it all the way back to Warhammer 2 and coming in rock hard with double Witch Hunter. Now, Witch Hunters did, I believe, get a cost reduction in this patch. I believe they had 100 gold taken off. So I was like, okay, Nurgle often does have SEs, like Soul Grinders. You know, might be seeing some sort of a character like Kugath. Although against the Empire, I think Kugath can still be killed pretty quickly. But even still, um, they are able to kind of put some decent armor-piercing magic damage down. So... Let's see how they do. We got two Witch Hunters. They look super cool and are one of the most iconic units on the Empire. And honestly, I think the matchup is pretty favored for the Empire against Nurgle. So this is like a good place to experiment with these type of things. So we got triple wagons, obviously super good. Nurgle has a combination of armor, mobility, and you know, a fair amount of slow units that wagons can outrun. So we got those bad boys. And the Black Lions are our Hellblaster. So yeah, these things can definitely mow down a lot of Nurgle units. Now, Spearman, Balthazar Geld's quite good. Final Transmutation, not a bad spell at all. Uh, Nurgle does end up in blobs oftentimes to synergize and get AoE heals. So anytime you could just do a big AoE magic damage on them, it's, it's going to be a win, right? Two Flagellants. Now, this is something for you aspiring Sigmar players. If uh, you guys want to bring Flagellants, always bring them in your starting army because there's a bug where if you summon them from reinforcements, they don't get their Frenzy, uh, which is a huge nerf, right? They lose a lot of stats. So always have them in your starting army and uh, you know live your best life. So for the army here of Hadris, he's going to be trying out some fun stuff. He's got Marauders with a Soul Grinder. Soul Grinders on this map can do some work because of some of the terrain. So even if I had a cannon, he could hide back here. He could work over here and shoot at my troops on the objective. This is definitely one of the maps in which uh, it could be okay. If it were like an Itza or an open field map, it would be probably a little bit too risky to try out the Soul Grinder. For the rest of the army, he does have the uh, Nurgle Caster with Rancid Visitations, which has uh, been all the hotness for Nurgle lately. Some Chaos Knights of Nurgle, which I have to admit, I mistakenly thought were Marauder Horsemen. I, I just, you know, so not used to seeing them, but... In theory, if they do get on top of the wagons or anything of value, they can be very, very sticky. And Barons of the Bog are just another huge staple of Nurgle. So, yeah, debuff, armor piercing now on their toads, or majority armor piercing values, they certainly aren't messing around. So, really excited to see if the Witch Hunters can do some work. Black Lion ROR going to be teeing off from downtown and ripping apart some of these heretics and doing some okay damage, kind of shooting at the edge of the formation. But there was a, like a little bit of a hill right there. So ultimately, line of sight was going to be a problem. So Hadri sneaking through the woods, going to be looking probably to ambush my back objective. Black line still shooting, and the double witch hunters going to be cruising up field. And, if, you know, they only cost 500 gold. If you bring them bare bones, they're 500. I did bring one witch hunter with accusation, because how can you not accuse heretics of heresy, right? It has to happen. So, uh, you know, it's only 500 baseline, which isn't bad. They do have three capture weight. They do magic damage in both melee as well at range. So really not bad. Now, Black Lion's getting some really, really good shots into the Nurgle boys downtown. So uh, the Thunder of Sigmar does sing in the night. And uh, yeah, I honestly think Black Lions are unironically good in this matchup. Uh, I would probably, you know, under a tournament circumstances, well bring them. Uh, granted, I don't think you would often end up in this matchup in a tournament. Uh, most Nurgle players usually want to avoid these type of ranged fights. Granted, it can be won by Nurgle for sure, especially with the hands in the hands of a top player like Hadris here. So Barons of the Bog moving about. Wagons able to pound them down. And now we have Demogriff Knights with Halberds, baby. The Hammer of Sigmar, probably my favorite unit on the Empire roster. I really like Demogriff Knights, and uh, I have a, my tabletop army runs just a mass horde of Demogriff Knights. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really uh, a fan of those guys. And honestly, they did get buffed in this patch, so they're quite a bit better. And it's not that they were bad before, um, but yeah, like a lot of elite cavalry, like Chaos Knights, Demis, like all those sort of things, they get buffed. Two Witch Hunters going to be fighting over on the point here, and uh, they got their pistols out for Sigmar, and are going to be ripping some pot shots and doming some heretics as they run away here. And, uh, it's not like crazy good damage, but you know, they do have piercing shots. So that one pistol shot actually took down five Marauders. Is there a little bit of a home for these guys? Look at that. They're wearing these guys down pretty well at a very cheap and hard to catch price point. So Demogriff Knights with Halberds pulling back. Flagellants got pounded pretty good. Hadri's uh, hiding his soul grinder in the shadows and uh, able to melt down my Flagellants. So they're going to be going to meet their end for Sigmar here. Now, I 100% thought these were Marauder Horsemen. I saw them coming in and uh, so I didn't like react super heavily to them. I was like, oh, I'll just shoot them with my Huntsman. But it wasn't until it was too late that I realized they were the dreaded Knights of Chaos. So Hadris gets in here. And my Black Lions are going to get swamped. My War Wagons forming a little bit of a blockade. They are a very expensive unit, these Chaos Knights. And War Wagons as well. Final Transmutation here, though, is super thick. So we get an overcasted one. Uh, and there is going to be a countermeasure of a Fleshy Abundance overcasted. But that is going to melt those foul demons, send them back to the warp. And the Demogriff Knights, the proud bird riders, are able to get in there and melt the Barons of the Bog, if I'm not mistaken. No, although the Barons look like they stabilized. I think the Fleshy Abundance kept them alive, which is very, very nice. Soul Grinder still bombarding. Demi's doing well, but there's a Cultus here, and also the Nurgle Sorcerer himself is a pretty good fighter, so you got to put some respect on his name. Now, in the backfield, my War Wagon's in big danger, so I pull back my Demogriff Knights. I know I need to save them, and uh, I want those Black Lions online, so the Demis do pull back to battle the Chaos Knights, which are just huge, man. I, I love the size changes we got to Chaos Knights. They finally look appropriate. Knights of the Blazing Sun coming out. Good choice against Nurgle in general. The magic resist is, or spell resist is pertinent. Nurgle does have spirit leeches and lore of death and granted visitations and 
stream of corruption and on top of that the fire damage makes him very good against anything that wants to be healing right so chaos knight's still in the hunt unfortunately my black lion's getting wrecked pretty badly so hadri's just kind of rapidly clicking on the black lions which is good to try and finish them off Knights of the Blazing Sun should hard counter the Toads pretty heavily. The Toads themselves have really low melee defense, they're very dependent on their bonus for infantry, but even still, the Toads do have more armor piercing now, so they can actually hurt the Chaos, or not Knights, but they can hurt my uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun more efficiently than they could before, whereas it, previously it would have been extremely one-sided. I would basically take no damage in the exchange. So back here it gets a little bit messy. Hadris does have the double cap on us. The wagons are just kind of dragging the Nurgle forces back, but he does break my Black Lines and my Demogriff Knights. I believe he used the Rancid Visitations from the Chaos Sorcerer, which is like the equivalent of their Spirit Leech. So he was able to push back my supporting unit and is still getting some good momentum. Now looking at the value, I am up 5.7 to 3.4 despite losing a very expensive unit. So things are going okay. Nurgle does have a ton of healing though, so you really need to be up by quite a bit more than that. Huntsmen, they're always a good choice against Nurgle, especially with the meta of Toads. Toads are going to be super common, and you can see they are able to uh, melt these Plague Toads. Here, the Knights of the Blazing Sun are swarmed, and you can see how like Plague Toads of Nurgle can more effectively be used against Heavy Cavalry. Yes, they'll lose one-on-one, -on -one, but they're pretty cheap at 650. So, you know, Knights of the Blazing Sun are an 1,100 gold unit. So having, uh, you know, two Toads against them is feasibly not like an uh, unrealistic circumstance here. Another big final transmutation going to be going down. That is a fat one. And that is going to be punishing the Forsaken and both the Plague Toads. And it uh, looks like there's going to be some Nurgle response of some sort. Is there some sort of magic coming down here? I think a Fleshy Abundance. Yeah, Hadrius has been pretty on top of that. Witch Hunter is coming over to try and salvage that fight. But in the backfield, he does chase off the Black Line. So my Sloppy Micro did get us caught there. But the War Wagons are prepared to battle the Soul Grinder. Uh, and now he's, he's in enemy territory pretty heavily, right? Where I can summon in reinforcements. And uh, he is deep, deep, deep in enemy lines. Huntsmen were summoned out of the uh, eastern spawn here, and they're putting their nice anti-large shots here. As far as this objective goes, we do have our Flagellants and Spearmen battling a couple beat-up Marauders. Hopefully, we'll be able to wrestle that one. Spearmen and Knights of the Blazing Sun, we do manage to push them back here with the support of some free company militia. The Floppy Hats of Doom have come out of reserve, and these bad boys are going to be moving up with their pistols and uh, trying to push back the foul demons of the warp. Meanwhile, Balthazar Gelt, the Supreme Patriarch Man... He's doing great, doing, uh, you know, certainly making the Emperor proud as he moves in to support the Knights of the Blazing Sun on Quicksilver. Double Witch Hunters back here, still ripping shots and not doing terribly, honestly. They're like, they're also three capture weight apiece, so it's like six capture weight for the Empire, which is kind of hard to remove. Witch Hunters do have okay combat stats, a little bit light on the armor department, but I, I think against like Nurgle factions, I could see like double Witch Hunter Balthazar Gelt actually being like a seriously viable thing. Um, you know, for example, if there's like a Soul Grinder running rampant or let's say like a Fly Lord or like a Kugath character, they can just sit there and put huge, huge armor piercing into him. And with their armor piercing, like penetrating missiles, it seems like they might have some weird tech against, let's say, like, uh, like uh, Chaos Warriors. Who knows? Just an idea. Soul Grinder does get taken out by the wagons. Huntsmen were summoned in and we do have more Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in. And we're just going to say for Sigmar because it sounds way cooler. I know they worship a different god, but they're fighting under the banner of uh, Balthazar Gelt, who I suppose is all homies with Franz and whatnot. Balthazar Gelt, though, moving up on the objective. Looks like Nurgle's going to get capped up here. We do see a big value difference with healing being taken into account. It's probably like 10.6 against like maybe 7. Um, but even still, Free Company Militia up on the point. Wagons moving in, and the Double Witch Hunters are also going to give sustainable capture weight. I wonder how if much damage they do against the Toads. Let's go ahead and keep tabs on this. They do like move and shoot. Yeah, so they're going to rip some shots there in a second. The Double Shot, and they do actually kill a Toad model. Not bad. So, I mean, if they can, you know perpetually just pick off toad models looks like they don't kill them every single shot i think the two bullets hit the same toad and that was the reason why that went down but anyways free company militia obviously don't like this fight but with the witch hunters helping out they should win it and the war wagons of course providing their capture weight over here we do flip this one and this objective is going to be going in for uh for sigmar as i believe uh some sort of witchcraft going down yeah another final transmutation there going to be hitting these bad boys Knights of the blazing sun really good against pretty much any lightly armored infantry and forsaken of nurgle are more tanky but even still should be pretty favored for us, as Nurgle is going to be streaming out some units. But at this point, the game is basically over. Um, Hadrius and I were just kind of chatting about the game and, you know, both agreeing that I do think this is a very favored matchup for the Empire. I, I can't think of the last time, like, I was really, like, super stressed out at playing against Nurgle. I, I do think Nurgle maybe has some tools. Now, what would they actually do, though? Because, like, you just have such good answers with the Empire against a lot of what Nurgle does. And to be fair, Nurgle, even with some of the buffs, I still think is, like, a pit lord faction. I would put them on the bottom rung of factions. Uh, they're much better, of course, and, like, honestly trade well into, like, Chaos Dwarves and some of the other melee-focused factions. Like, I honestly think Nurgle can do very, very well against Korn under the right circumstances. But, um, yeah, it, against these, like, ranged, like, mixed arms factions that can really pull them apart especially the empire empire's got like grenades and heavy shot cavalry and like a lot of good stuff empire is like the classic like benchmark like every single season we've had the empire's been sitting around like 50 percent win rate uh, i believe this season they're literally 50 percent win rate too which is great i love to see them being like balanced um but as far as like nurgle goes i don't know how i would go about that matchup really i mean obviously hadrius and i both agreed there were some inefficiencies here 
with the Soul Grinder and the Chaos Knights, even though they did do good, it was it was mainly because uh, you know I thought they were Robert Horsemen. Um, and yeah, the Barons of the Bog also just got Karate Chopped as well. Probably just wider, to be honest. I do think Nurgle can win this matchup. I really do. Especially, like, Witch Hunters paid for themselves. You know, not bad. They still had a lot to give, too. Wagons were the hard carries, obviously. Black Lions, with proper protection, could have gotten a lot more value, too. Um, Demis are quite good here, too, against Toad Spam. You know, Anti-Large Halberds and their armor and their ability to deal with armored infantry is quite good. We'll go to the drawing board and come up with a Nurgle build. And uh, GG well played to my opponent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the double Witch Hunter back in action, man. It's been a long, long time. We'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so we got Nurgle versus the Empire. I almost wonder if like Kugath is decent, just to like absorb all those shots and just be like the huge sponge. But I even I feel like he might get Goon. So if the Empire comes in with Boris, like Fest Festus could be a liability. Kind of makes me think like a Herald of Nurgle on a Rotfly wouldn't be a bad choice. Just kind of like this cheap, cheap kind of like hunter type character. So probably we go Lord of Nurgle, Rotfly. I did like Hadri's Fleshy Abundance Rancy, Rancid Visitations combo. I thought that was pretty good. And yeah, he's got an AoE heal too, which is going to be incredibly relevant. Um, so against Empire Infantry, you're going to be facing Flagellants and State Troopers. Maybe the... Yeah, maybe maybe these guys are the way. Um, on top of that, Empire has struggled with armor in the past. So maybe you could go like... Yeah, the front line is Shielded Chaff, and then you have like Great Weapons following up behind. You will be pretty vulnerable against um, against like, like a Black Line or a Sunmaker with this build is the only problem. But you do have this guy... Right, and rot flies are actually much better now. Um, I'll be showing you guys some replays. I don't. I might have already done it. Where the rot flies are hard carry, so you could dive empire artillery with rot flies and furies, and they could probably dispatch any empire defenders. Like spearmen will get overwhelmed by the furies and hounds, and then the rot flies can deal with like peeling cab units. Maybe that is the direction we go. I do think double cultist is still really good. Um, the empire definitely can struggle to deal with them. How, I mean, the witch hunters ironically might be good against them, but um, with these guys, you just bring gates of Nurgle. Yeah. So something wide like this for your opener, and then you're just summoning in speed from there. Uh, definitely the Toads, I think, are, are very solid. I think a couple of those. I wouldn't go with Baron to the Bog, because Empire's never going to give you a blob fight, right? Marauder Horsemen, um, I think, are a staple. Really good against Empire Heavy Cavalry. Pretty disruptive. And uh, Forsaken are also not a bad Shock Trooper to get up on the point. So this build, honestly, feels pretty good. I still think it would be Empire favored if you're playing like a good Empire player. But um, overall, I think something like this could work. GG, well played. See you guys on the other side. And that is it for tonight.